for the last very, very long time away in a galaxy really, really close to home, like in here, Star Wars has been the staple food of an awful lot of uh, geeks and science fictions and science fantasy aficionados. Fantasy Flight got not long ago the license to actually produce games and they did a wonderful work with X-Wing. Now they have the Edge of the Empire role-playing game out and they have done something really, really cool. Firstly, they have this beginner's box which comes with everything you need to start playing. But then they came out with this mighty tome of role-playing that comes with, well, with everything to play the role-playing game properly. And we have the GM screen and GM's kit. We're going to take a look at this, we're going to take a look at the components and we're going to take a look at how well it plays or not. Welcome to the GMS Magazine review videos. So, for a company that produces stunningly beautiful games and is renowned for having not particularly good rule books, to have a role playing game that comes in a box is a bit of a uh, when you first buy it. With Edge of the Empire, though, the beginners came, they've done something amazing. We're going to take a look at two things in here. Firstly, how good the production values of this is. But also, I'm going to give you a brief rundown as to what the mechanics are for the game, what comes in the box and how it's being laid out and why it is so good and why we want more games like this for any other publisher out there. Um, firstly, the box is not all that great, okay? Let's, 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 that, let's get that out of the way. Uh, the cardboard is thin enough that hopefully the camera will be able to show this. It breaks if you open it a little bit on the quick side, which is very irritating for a somebody like me who likes to keep everything pristine. So you have to be very careful with that. If you open this flap a lot, it will probably break. So that's not particularly amazing. Yes, as you can see, the printing is beautiful. The illustration is absolutely gorgeous and the layout is fantastic. That's what I was expecting from Fantasy Flight. No disappointment so far, except the material. You know, the, the material is, is pretty much like the separation cardboard that you find inside the, the, the board game, which are never good. Sorry. What do we have inside? Several things. Uh, in reasons they have done this very well indeed. Oh, by the way, back. Pretty gorgeous. One of the reasons this game really impressed me to start with is because everything has been thought out to a level of detail which is absolutely fantastic. When you open the box, literally you see this read me first paper right away. And this read me first paper that you can see is just four little pages you get a paragraph welcoming you to the world of Star Wars and, and the RPG, what's a role-playing game, and, and exactly what's going to happen with an example of play that reads in next to no time, and it gives you a flavor, a feeling as to what's meant to happen during a, a basically during a game. This is a beginner's game. Let's not forget this, okay? This is aimed at people who know about the Star Wars universe, but not about role-playing games. This is amazing, and any 14, 13, 15-year-old will go for it right away. Well, I would, and I'm 14. And then the introduction of the movie. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And then you have the adventure book, and it tells you very clearly, read this second is guiding you, not just through the process of learning the game, but through the adventure itself as well. And it's going into small little chunks. Staple Bound. This is a 32 pages little book. Again, gorgeous illustrations and beautiful, beautiful layout. Very clean, 
plenty of space everywhere, easy to read font. All the side boxes have been very, and the sidebars have been very clearly marked and differentiated from each other so you know exactly what you can expect when you read them. A description of all the components that come in the box and the adventure begins. When you have finished playing the adventure, you find this, which is telling you, hey, more to come, come back, buy more stuff, fair enough. And then you have the rule book, and this is the last thing you're meant to be reading, and it tells you, read this book last. The beginner's game, this is a perfect bound, soft cover book, 64 pages, I believe it is, let me, 48. And the beautiful thing about this book is that it gives you a very quick introduction about the rules that come in the core rule book, which is massive. It's about over 400, nearly 450 pages, which is gigantic. What's the good thing about this? It shares the layout. It goes into a little bit more detail about the mechanics and mechanisms of, of the game. Uh, a little bit more. It gives you enough to keep you entertained, it gives you enough to inspire what's, what could be happening in the future. But most importantly, for beginners, it doesn't give you so much information that you could be put off or intimidated by it. It's been very well measured. The, the amount of rules given in this book has been really well measured to give you a, a flavor for everything, give you enough, but not enough to be able to answer every single question, but enough to keep you going. That's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. A couple of maps, and I'm going to bring this out of the screen size, so apologies for that. Lovely cartography, and the cartography tells you the location where everything is meant to be happening. This is the little town where you're meant to be scapping, called Morshuta. The canteen, and the spaceport control. If you succeed in escaping more shooter and the encounters that are laid in the adventure, you get into the crate fun. No prizes for guessing what spaceship that's been inspired on. Excellent. And I'll tell you why it's excellent later on. With this, you don't get character sheets. You get character folios. This is amazing. This is absolutely amazing. You get several of these. The bounty hunter, a smuggler, a colonist, and a hired gun. The game is being optimized for four players. Why this is so good is because the folio keeps hammering the rules even if you don't realize they're doing it, and gives the player all the information they need right away to their fingertips. Because the game relies so heavily into icons that are in the dice, and it's a very different mechanism from pretty much any other role-playing game that use dice, which are just numbered dice, apart from Fate and Hollow Earth and a few, a handful more. But this one relies on those very, very much. The symbols on the dies are being described constantly to make sure that the beginner doesn't have any doubts and can find the meaning right away. Their characteristic, brown ability, uh, sorry, agility, intellect, cunning, willpower and presence. Those will be used pretty much all the time. Uh, your wounds, your strains, uh, your soak value, how much damage you can soak before you can actually begin to feel the pain, your skills what ranks you have, so on and so forth. And this is when you advance. So basically, level one, level two. And for more advancement. Everything has been done for you, so you don't have to worry of thinking about what am I meant to be doing here or there. The same applies to everyone. It's brilliant. It really is very, very good. 
And lastly, I should have somewhere in the box, allow me to bring it back, yes, two things. A set of dice. With the symbols, you know, the successes, the failures, the advantages, the disadvantages, and the force, all there. This box, to be honest with you, is almost worth buying just for this. The box costs £24.95, which is about $35, something like that. Uh, this, a set of dice like this will cost you about Eleven pounds or fifteen, sixteen dollars, and you get the rest. Hey, why not? Um, now, if anyone at Fantasy Flight, and I hope they are going to, to look at this, don't stop producing this like you stop producing the Warhammer Fantasy dice because they become very difficult to find. The game relies very heavily in having a set of dice like this. If you want to make life more comfortable for the players, then you want to have more than one set of dice. If you stop producing those dice, you're making our lives as players a lot more difficult. So please do not stop producing this. Players, if you're going to buy this game, do invest in at least two or three sets of these dice, because if Fantasy Flight doesn't sell enough or the license goes away, these dice will be gone forever. And that would be very irritating. Grant over. The game also comes with some tokens. And the tokens is what you would expect from Fantasy Flight. They are colorful, they are big, you have the characters that you can play with, and you have some of the people that you're going to be finding in the adventure, including the hut, your rancor, and yes, uh, TIE fighters and the little Fright Kang or Millennium Falcon, what it is. And the Force Tokens. The tokens are as colourful, as thick, thick enough for anything to play with, which is what Fantasy Flights has at the custom to, you know, the board games. So it's a very good thing that they are applying the same production values to this RPG. And what the heck is the Star Wars universe? It deserves it. So now, why did I like the game so much? Allow me. Firstly, I love the mechanics. The mechanics are very similar to the ones that you find in Warhammer Fantasy role-playing game. And that is, shouldn't come as a surprise, because Jay Little uh, is behind this game, and he's also behind the Warhammer Fantasy. How does it work? Each die has a number of icons. These are the icons in here. You get your successes, your triumphs, advantages, failures, despairs, and threats. Successes are cancelled by failures. Triumphs can't they say success, but can also be used to trigger something else, um, like a powerful consequence. That means that you could fail everything, but still have something happening to your advantage. Uh, for example, say that you fail at destroying the stormtroopers that are ambushing you. But if you still want half of this, because this is a triumph, it may mean that you have also, the, uh, I don't know, uh, got rid of their weapons. So you haven't killed them, but they have no more weapons. Advantages are cancelled by threats. And an advantage in, means a, a very positive side effect or consequence, even on a failing. So again, you fail completely, it's absolutely horrible, but you still manage to accomplish something that you weren't expecting, but it's still advantageous, advantageous for you. Uh, despair, which cancel the advantages, uh, also means that if you succeed, but you have a despair symbol, something that goes, it's something adverse uh, happens and, and it hurts you or hurts the players or hurts the scene. Every time you want to roll, 
and this is just the basics, you get together your pool of dice. So I don't know, let's say that we need to get together that die, that die, and that, and that, and that. And, that. I don't know. and you roll them. And you see, right, this is a success. This counts for nothing. Two successes. And then you have three threats and two failures. That's no good. That really is no good at all. That success goes away with a failure. Threats is a negative side effect consequence, um, even in a successful check. Now we have two successes and one more failure. So in total, we have one success and three threats. That means that you have managed to achieve what you needed, say, for example, opening um, a lock or bypassing security. You've managed that, but in its way, something of a three threats level has happened to you. For example, the alarm has been triggered and you've been locked in the room or you receive an electric shock uh, because it was booby trapped or over to you, whatever it is. The storytelling possibilities for a system like this are absolutely endless, really endless, but it is also very hard work for the GM until the players understand the system really well and they can come up with whatever it is is happening at the time and with, with their role. Uh, you have to be interpreting everything constantly. So it, it, it can be hard work, so beware of that. Now, the thing that Fantasy Flight has also done very, very well is introduce the mechanics. In the adventure book, which, by the way, the adventure, don't expect too much from it. This is going to be a spoiler. So if you're planning on being a player of this adventure and you haven't done yet, please skip the next few minutes. In the adventure, you have to escape more shooter. To escape more shooter, you have to get out of jail, go into the canteen and find your way to get a hyper reactor matter that then you can have to take to the freighter so you can get out of more shooter and then find your way through a couple of TIE fighters in space and then the universe is your oyster. More shooter really resembles Tatooine, you know, where Luke Skywalker have to get out, get out. The canteen scene very much resembles where Han Solo meets Luke Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi getting the freighter resembles how the Millennium Falcon uh, left a train, so on and so forth. The adventure is extremely familiar with anyone who's seen the movies. Anyone. Also, the whole thing begins with meet your characters. They are in jail. And then encounter one on the run, get out of here. Encounter one has been designed and balanced, so you can use a very minimum number of dice roll and uh, icons. The whole thing is really, really quick and very easy to get to grips with. 10 minutes to read this page, that's it. You're done. You're playing it right away. Encounter 2 brings you a little bit more, more adversaries. Adversaries are well known, you know, to the Gamorreans. Come on, who doesn't know the Gamorreans? Um, very well known. Um, to anyone, and it introduces a little bit more, you know, what their abilities are, what they can do, what they cannot do, uh, the maneuvers that you can take. So it tries to cover enough corners so the beginners have something to do without going overboard with explaining how everything is meant to be happening and give you enough uh, room for maneuver to invent your own thing. We're going to have attacks, advantages, the junk shop, how to interact with people, you know, how to bluff, um, the diplomatics, the dynamics between uh, characters and NPCs, are all covered in here. Command control, more fighting, stormtroopers, very cool. And last but not least, 
up, up and away, Starship Combat. So pretty much everything that could be covered and seen and expected from the Star Wars universe, it's in here in a very quick and easy way to prepare. This is brilliant. I mean, this is absolutely fantastic. You can give this to a group of children for Christmas and they will be playing, and I don't mean reading, I will be playing it the very same afternoon. How cool is that? And since Star Wars is likely to be on Christmas, you know, on the television at some point during Christmas, you cannot get it wrong. You really cannot get it wrong, you have to. Now, this is the beginner's game. Um, it doesn't end there. I'm going to put this away. And this, my friends, is the Edge of the Empire, the role-playing game, the core rulebook. Now, if you are a seasoned role-player, you may want to come into this book right away. Word of warning, it weighs a ton, and it's nearly 450 pages of information. It's a very, very big tone. And you can get also the game's master kits, which, as you can see, cost in my local shop £13.99. Or $20. And it comes with the GM's uh, master screen and something else. I'm not sure what it is because I haven't opened it yet. We'll do it in a minute. The book. This book is probably mortal. Okay, it's been so well bound. The, the cover is so hard. It's, seriously, it's probably immortal. It's going to last forever, in a day. Again, very well thought out. Read this first. Which is good. It's an introduction. It's Yoda. Who could this like this? It's Yoda. Welcome to a role-playing game. Galaxy. An example of play. I like this. More games should include this. Seriously, more games. Please. Inside. The whole thing oozes Star wars -dom. The table of content is long. Again, there's an awful lot of information in this book. Yep, Han Solo. Same little layout, clean, easy, familiar, and every page screams Star Wars. The attention to detail is absolutely phenomenal, truly phenomenal. And this game is pretty much the beginner's game, but bigger with way more information to allow you to do anything you want. It's a role-playing game. It's great and it's very heavy and it is certainly worth the 40 quid. About 45, 50 dollars, something like that. Is the price anywhere? No, no, no price anywhere. Well, it's worth it. It really is. I love it. And what I don't know if I love yet, let me put that away, is the Games Master's Kit. Let's open it. Just a piece of paper, it can go away. This is the GM screen. Oh, look at that. Boba Fett. Oh, look at that. Oh, damn. This is gorgeous. This is beautiful. Look at that. This is gorgeous. <laughs> I like it very much. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm going all geeking out on this one. I, I apologize, but this is really beautiful. I love it. Inside, the tables that you're more likely to use are not. Uh, again, you have you get your, your, your symbol for the dice, uh, your, your result options, some advantages, the force, difficulty levels, melee weapons, uh, difficulty modifiers, weapon qualities, uh, critical injuries, Vehicle critical injuries, the armor, it is what you need, what you would expect 
from a GM screen. It's really cool. And the Games Master Kit. Yeah, yeah, I'm a fanboy. Get over it. There's an adventure, which is really nice. Um, yeah, it was supposed to be a simple job. That sounds like they start to an adventure. I don't know if they can refuse. Oh, it's a gem at the heart. It's a heart. I think it's really good, um, in, in seriousness though. I think it's really good that Fantasy Flight has chosen to start with a very familiar feel for the Star Wars. It feels very much like the original three episodes rather than the, the more recent ones. Um, it combines the colourful and really bright colour um, palette of episodes one, two and three with the more subdued, slightly older and ragged look, look uh, of, of episode four, five and six. So. I, I do appreciate that um, very much. The, the amount of attention to detail, the passion that's gone into creating this, is absolutely fantastic. Uh, this is not the first Star Wars game that's been produced. I don't know if it will be the last. That's going to depend an awful lot on how much money they make out of this. The reason why I'm enthusiastic about it is because the game is very approachable. I really like the mechanics. It looks absolutely gorgeous. And if you're a Star Wars fan, then you have to have it. My concerns about the game, if it doesn't make enough money, it will not be as supported as it should. Being a, an expensive license on Star Wars, they're going to have an awful lot of expectations. And if they don't manage it, then we're not going to see the same level of quality adventure prepared in the future, and we may not see the dice turning up. It's a risk that as gamers, we, we have to take. Am I glad and happy to take that risk? Hell yes. Absolutely yes, because there's so much Star Wars material out there that even if Fantasy Fly tomorrow, and I'm not saying they're going to do this, I doubt very much they, they ever would, decided to get rid of this altogether, you can still continue doing your own thing. If you like science fantasy, if you like Star Wars, just get this game. Like now, please, because it is brilliant. If you want to get someone into Star Wars universe and role-playing games, the beginner box is a must, must have. Fantasy Flight, I adore you. Jay Little, you're a bloody kid.